I have had to take a break for a number of reasons from making and posting videos on YouTube, but uh, I really do enjoy doing this kind of thing, and so I thought I would try to at least uh, make uh, one or two more videos and perhaps more as I can. Uh, and this one is going to be about testing capacitors. And one of the reasons that I would like to, to do this video is not only to talk about vintage capacitor testers like the one you see in front of you. This is a solar uh, capacitor tester. And if you want to see more of its use, uh, I suggest you go to the uh, YouTube channel for B. Anderson, uh, Bob Anderson. It's called B. Anderson TV. And he uses a solar for his vintage TV restorations and also uh, on his, he does some radios from time to time as well. But you don't, testing capacitors is not just about vintage equipment, it's also about modern equipment and we'll talk about that. But one of the reasons that I would like to talk about capacitor testers is illustrated by this capacitor, which if you see there is a ring right here of, of bubbles where this capacitor has uh, failed. Now this was a brand new capacitor, 630 volt rating, and yet when I tested it at 500 volts it literally uh, blew up. Now uh, by blew up I mean it failed completely and some of the innards uh, squeezed out through a crack that formed in the case. Now, why do I talk about that? Well, the, a lot of people think that you can restore old equipment, or new equipment for that matter, by simply shotgunning capacitors. That is, grab capacitors out of your, your stock or order them, and then just put them in and everything will work. Well, what often happens is the new capacitor might itself be bad. It might work at low voltage, but in this case I was going to be putting these into a receiver that had about 350 volts in it. So I wanted to test them all the way up to 500 volts, partly for uh, the fact that when a receiver is first turned on, the voltage, the B plus voltage, comes up fast and often quite a bit above the working voltage, so a receiver with 350 volts. It's not unusual for there to be 400 or even 450 volts briefly during the early uh, turn-on. And if the capacitor fails at that voltage, well now you've got a permanently bad new capacitor in your circuit. So it's a good idea to, to stress test these capacitors. Now you may say, well, I only work on transistor equipment. I don't need to pretest those capacitors. Well, yes, you do. So I hope this is sufficient motivation to, uh, to encourage you to buy and use a capacitor tester of some sort. Now, the one you see here, the solar, is uh, appropriate for people who work on vintage tube gear. The reason is, down in this lower right-hand corner, you will see that there are a series of uh, switch positions that will allow you to test the leakage of a capacitor. In the position it's in, in this case the C1, it's using the bridge. The bridge is the uh, circuit that is controlled by this dial here, and the C1 position is the outer edge of that. Now let me zero in a little bit on that uh, on that dial, and I hope you can see, perhaps I'll turn on a little bit more light over here, it's reading about 20 microfarads or 22 microfarads or something like that. And that is what the capacitor that we're testing uh, should read. It's a 20 microfarad, 200 working volt capacitor. It's a capacitor I took out of a B&K uh, vintage tube tester. So, uh, so the capacity tests okay. 
The next question, and by the way, the way this, this thing works, and I'll turn some lights off so you can see this a little better, is in the upper right hand corner is an eye tube. And let me zero in on that. And once again, as I've said, if you really want to see this in action uh, more than, than I'm going to show, go to B. Anderson's uh, channel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock the uh, the bridge control back and forth and you'll see that what happens is the uh, as you move it it opens and then it closes again at the point where it's at maximum uh, open is when you read the dial what I've now done is move the, the uh, switch over, and I think I can turn the light back on for this uh, because this is a little bit brighter bulb. It's set to the zero position. That means that the leads are shorted, and we'll talk about these leads in a second. The, uh, the first position tests at approximately 100 volts, and I say approximately because these testers weren't really uh, calibrated that well, but around 100 volts, uh, maybe plus or minus 10. So we go to, to that, and we, you notice that it blinked briefly, and then the light went out. Now we're going to go to 200 volts, which is its rated capacity. And once again, you see the uh, it blinks and goes out. I'm not going to go to 300 volts. And you may notice at 300 volts, the light comes on and pretty much stays on. Now, for a 200 volt capacitor, it's perfectly okay because it's not supposed to work at 300 volts. But suppose this were uh, a 300 volt capacitor, or in some equipment, a 400 volt or 450 volt or even 500 volt electrolytics. You see, it finally did go out. Now, it, it will barely work at 300 volts. But this is the sort of stress testing that I think you should do in any capacitor that you're about to put into a, an old radio. Now we'll talk about a number of other ways of testing capacitor value, but there really isn't a, a good substitute for applying a good leakage test to old capacitors, whether they are uh, the uh, mylar or metal a uh, film capacitor like I showed you a minute ago that that <laughs> smoked at uh, 500 volts. Uh, and of course those are used to replace paper and uh, uh, other older type capacitors when you're doing a restoration. The uh, But whether it's a, a paper capacitor you're replacing or an electrolytic or even a modern ceramic or any other, you really should test the capacitor, the replacement capacitor, and especially in tube gear you should test it for leakage. As we'll see when we start talking about uh, gear like this, uh, a computer or a modern transistor integrated circuit equipment, you should also test for ESR, which is called equivalent series resistance. This, capac this tester will not test for ESR. It's perfectly adequate for testing capacitors to install in old radios. It's also perfectly uh, adequate for old television sets built up until about the mid-1960s when they started using switching mode power supplies. But you really need an ESR tester if you're going to work on anything that has a switching mode power supply in it, whether it's a, a personal computer, or a modern TV, and they started using switch mode power supplies in some TVs as early as the late 60s. So, okay, I said a minute ago that I was going to talk about these test leads, so let me do that, but first I'm going to turn this unit off because I don't like to use it very much. It is, uh, it is old, like me, and uh, <laughs> not as old as I am, but uh, Modern equipment tends to use uh, banana plugs. This uses what are called tip jacks. They're much, much smaller 
than a banana plug. Let me show you. There is a comparison of the two. You'll notice that this is much, much smaller than a banana plug. This is an adapter that you can buy. I think it says 1432, and I think this is made by Pomona. Let's see if that's what you read. 1432. Anyway, if you need to get these, what you are looking for is a banana to tip uh, adapter. And you can put these on uh, a banana plug uh, cord and then use them in this old equipment. Without an adapter, there's really uh, you're really in a in a bit of, in a little bit of a hurt on trying to put a banana plug into a tip jack. But let me show you a trick that you might want to consider. Most multimeters come with test probes that will fit one end will fit in a tip jack. So if you're in a pinch and you cannot uh, find a, a tip jack to, to uh, fit these, or uh, you uh, just don't want to buy a, an adapter, what you can do is plug the multimeter probe in and it will still work. Now, of course, you always test capacitors with power off, so you would now be using the other end of this, and you'd have to find a way to connect to that, uh, between that and your capacitor. Anyway, uh, I hope this has been helpful on uh, a little bit of vintage capacitor testing. I'd like to digress now for a few minutes to kind of talk about capacitor testing in general and also some of the differences between the old and the new. That is, the uh, what was used in vintage equipment and the capacitors that are used in modern equipment. Here are a few things about capacitors that uh, you probably already know, but just to review. There is a difference between vintage capacitors and modern capacitors, but it's all just terminology. In other words, the, uh, for example, a modern uh, capacitor, like, say, this one, that's a 630 volt uh, plastic film capacitor, will replace the one of the older uh, paper, waxed paper uh, capacitors. These are normally uh, wound with some foil over a piece of waxed paper. They tend to fail, so generally you should always replace these if you can. The one thing that confuses some people is in old equipment up to and through World War uh, II, capacitors were often called condensers. After the war, the uh, uh, term capacitor became uh, more popular, and today that's all you see. When you deal with uh, capacitors, sometimes you see their value marked as capital MFD, and sometimes with UFD, the U is uh, actually uh, the Greek letter mu, Th that just stands for microfarad. So MFD is the same as UFD. So 10 MFD is 10, UFD is 10 microfarads. A picofarad today is what often in the old days was called a micro microfarad. Some uh, old techs used to call this Mickey Mikes. So uh, uh, a 10 Mickey Mike was a 10 picofarad today. The uh, capacitors sometimes are marked with VDC and sometimes with WVDC. WVDC just means workings volts DC and in general those are equivalent. Now some capacitors, particularly used in computer power supplies and things like that, have a surge uh, voltage rating as well. But generally you won't run into those in consumer equipment, it's generally in commercial equipment. 
The uh, ESR just means equivalent series resistance. I won't go into that, but if you don't aren't familiar with what ESR means, then I suggest maybe you uh, take a look at some uh, YouTube videos on that. There are several excellent ones. So things like picofarad, nanofarad, and microfarad are used today. In the old days, uh, micro microfarad and microfarad were the terms that were used. Of course, these simply refer to uh, a picofarad uh, is 10 to the minus 12 farads, a nanofarad 10 to the minus 9, a microfarad 10 to the minus 6, or in other words, a thousand picofarads is a nanofarad, a thousand nanofarads is a microfarad. Okay, now let's talk about testing capacitors. We've seen already how to use a vintage tester. And if I can, I think what I'm going to try to do is to uh, do a video on the wide range of uh, capacitor testers that have uh, been made over the years. But for right now, the three things you generally want to test for, and there are other things you can test on capacitors. You can test for value, that is like uh, a p how many picofarad, microfarad, etc. You can test for leakage. In other words, above the, the, the circuit voltage. So for example, if you have a circuit which has uh, 300 volts in it, you might want to test at 400 volts. Uh, and finally, ESR. And ESR is extremely important in switching circuits. It's not a bad idea to check ESR in all capacitors, but it's especially important in switching circuits. And by switching circuits, I mean computers, switching mode power supplies, anything where you are switching uh, the, a signal uh, rapidly. And as, the more power you are switching, the more important the ESR becomes. In fact, in, in many uh, TVs and computers that fail because of capacitors, it's almost always because of high ESR. Now, the types of testers, and like I say, I'm just going to briefly go over this here. There are multimeters that can test uh, capacity, but generally they will not test anything else. They won't test leakage, they won't test ESR. There are specialty ESR meters that will test ESR. There are also RLC, or resistance inductance capacitance meters. They usually only test value. They don't test uh, leakage in, in general. And then there are some specialty testers that may combine uh, several of these tests. They might test for value leakage ESR. Some of them test for things like dielectric absorption and other uh, issues that might be important. But for the, the hobbyist or the person testing capacitors to install in equipment, whether old or new, generally, if you test, as I've indicated here, for value, leakage, and ESR, you're, you're fine. Here are some of the capacitor types you might run into. Now this is uh, an especially large 700 volt electrolytic capacitor. Came out of some uh, very old equipment. Uh, they don't generally make 700 volt capacitors anymore except for very special applications and they're very expensive. This is the capacitor I tested earlier. It's just a standard 200 volt electrolytic. Generally today electrolytics come in ranges from uh, anywhere down to six from six volts up to about uh, 500 volts. Uh, below that you see uh, a modern radial electrolytic. By the way, when the leads come out the ends, that's called axial. When the leads come out of one side, that's called radial. And you probably need to know that if you're ordering online, because uh, if you are looking for this kind of capacitor, today you're almost uh, more likely to find this capacitor in your listing. So if you check axial lead, you'll get only these capacitors. But if you check, if you don't check the lead type, you, a lot of the listings will be for radials. Uh, 
Then we have ceramic capacitors, and I apologize, they're pretty small, uh, hard to see here. Uh, these are the are, uh, plastic capacitors. Uh, this is a, an example of, a, uh, of an old style capacitor. Often uh, capacitors that look like this are mica capacitors, but they have dots on them. And the reason I bring this up is, if you uh, have one of these and you want to know its value, what I suggest you do is get a copy of uh, the Allied Electronic Data Handbook. It's available online, just search for that, Allied Radio Electronics Data Handbook. If you do that in Google, you'll find PDF copies, and in there you'll find charts that show you how to read these kinds of capacitors. A lot of times they are simply uh, wax paper capacitors like the ones you see up there. These are different types of wax paper capacitors. In general they should always be replaced, usually with something like these, uh, these uh, plastic film capacitors down below. The, uh, you'll see that capacitors come in different colors, in different sizes. They come with uh, axial leads, they come with radial leads like this one. But in general, if you stick to the same capacity and the same voltage rating as the one you're replacing, you're, you're usually in pretty good shape. Do not, please do not, put in a capacitor with a lower voltage rating than the one that the circuit calls for. And also, please do not put in a capacitor that is significantly larger in capacity. If you put one in that's smaller in capacity, so for example, if you replace a 20 microfarad with a 10, circuit may hum, you may have a few uh, bad problems, but if you put in like a 100 microfarad where it should be a 20, you may wind up blowing up your power transformer, your rectifier tube, and all kinds of things because you get surge currents. So this notion that bigger is better is not true. When you replace capacitors, try to stay close to the original. Now one thing you will find, and I forgot to mention in the earlier uh, uh, paper, is capacitor values have changed a little bit used to be you could buy uh, capacitors like 20 microfarads. The, the EIA, the Electronic Industries Association, and RETMA and others have standardized on a sequence of capacitor steps. So today, uh, the closest you can get to a 20 is a 22. Closest you can get to a 30 is a 33, and so on. That's fine. That's no big deal. Actually, if you stay within 20%, you're usually pretty safe. So uh, I hope that has been useful. What I'm going to do now is kind of do a, a part B of this, but this uh, has gotten a little longer than I expected. And in part B, I'm going to talk about how you actually use capacitor testers on things like this, uh, this computer motherboard over here.